A very warm welcome to ET Auto Retail Forum 2021. It has been an exciting day for all of us. Now coming up next is a special session, a fireside chat with Imran Van Gustel, who has been working with top leaders, managers and sales professionals, driving digital transformation of dealer networks. He has worked with notable brands such as Bentley, Volkswagen, Jaguar Land Rover, Volvo and Shell Global. He currently leads automotivecoaches.com. In today's session, he will take us through how leaders can drive change in meeting customer expectations of today and tomorrow. Over to you, Mr. Imre. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to, uh, to be here. What I wanted to do in today's session is share with you all my experience about how to implement digital tools within dealer networks and also how to manage change at a dealership level. Because what we often see is that it's very nice to have digital tools, but then implementing them and making sure that sales advisors and service advisors use it can be very challenging. Let me first start with asking if you as a brand at this moment are meeting and exceeding the customer expectations. Not only the customer expectations from today, but also from tomorrow. And there, the next question is, what are your customer promise? What are you promising the customer from the beginning stage of the customer journey until the end? Do you have that clear? Is that clear for your dealerships? What are you doing in the first contact with the car when customers are receiving the offer? How do they receive the offer? What opportunities do you have for customers to purchase a vehicle totally online? It is all very important to define your customer promises well, because at the end of the day, your customer promises have to be converted in ways of working. And a key question there is, what do you do then to increase your influence throughout the customer journey? And what we see here is a traffic light on green, where we often see that the influence over the buying process for the offline customer journey is pretty okay. Many brands and many dealerships, from the moment that the customer walks into the showroom, they are doing that pretty, pretty well. But what about the, off, the online customer journey? How well are you influencing that customer so that that customer searching online is coming to you and staying with you? And then hopefully going to your showroom. That is where many dealerships are struggling still at the moment. The key question I always ask also is, how do you achieve maximum customer ownership? Do you have that customer ownership for the online customer and for the offline customer and for the customer who is dancing between both levels? Customer ownership. Now, many brands, many OEMs, they are focusing on implementing, developing and launching digital tools whether it's virtual reality, a test drive planner, video chat, video messages, how-to videos, you name it. The focus is on launching those digital tools. And then the key question is, okay, we, we have those tools ready, but what then? And what I've often seen at OEMs, at bigger, bigger dealer groups, is that they have the tools ready, they throw them to the dealer network, and then they are surprised that the dealerships, the sales advisors, the after sales advisors are not working with the tools as it was planned. But tools, that's only 20% of the winning game. It is 80% about how are we going to change the behavior of the persons that need to work with those digital tools. So actually, when you are an OEM or when you are a dealer group or you're at a dealership and you want to implement digital tools, 80% of the focus should go to the people that are going to use those tools. 
And the key question there is, how do we want them to use it and who exactly is going to use them? When you are offering online sales and you receive a telephone call from a customer or an online chat, or maybe um, a live screen sharing or a live video chat, who is doing that at the retailer? Is it the online sales team? Is it the traditional sales advisor? Or do you have a new role within your dealership who is going to coordinate those online sales leads? And what about if that customer is interested in having a test drive? Who is then taking the lead of that initiative? Are you going to shift that lead from the online sales team to the sales advisor on the floor? What is the process that you're going to follow there? And you have to be very clear on that, that yes, you have digital tools available for customers to contact with you in a different way, but how are you organize it from that moment onwards? Summarizing so far, you have customer expectations, you have customer promises, you have the people and the ways of working you need to be fine and you have the digital tools and that all should work like a swiss clock together with each other questions to you as a brand as a dealer group as a dealership what are you promising the customers and who is going to work with the digital tools and how are you going to implement this uh, within your dealership. The leadership question behind all this, how are we going to implement the change? And there I want to share with you the following slides. If you have a today's reality and you want your dealerships to work in a different way with digital tools, you should ask yourself, are you ready for it? Before starting the change, what is your change readiness? And you can use these kind of questions on the different levels. I, as an OIM, I want to implement something within my entire network on a national level, as a dealer group for all my dealers, or as a dealership for my sales, after sales or marketing team. You have to ask yourself, the questions, do we have a shared vision? Because before implementing something, the entire team who is going to be involved with that new initiative should have a shared vision. And the shared vision is not like, okay, we're going to implement, for example, video messages, and you write an email to all the dealers or all the sales advisors, and that's the shared vision. No, shared vision is really when you are creating and facilitating the dialogue with the retailers, with the dealers, or within your dealership, with the teams, what's in it for me? Why are we, for example, going to start with video messaging? If you are not creating this shared vision and you're not dedicating time to that, you're getting people who are confused. Why should we start with, for example, video messaging? The second pillar that you need to be in place or the second question that you need to ask yourself before implementing any change is what skills do we need to have in place? And how are we going to get those skills at a certain level? What does good look like? How are we gonna train? How are we gonna monitor? How are we gonna coach? If skills are not in place, or you don't have a decent plan to get those skills in place, then people are afraid because the implementation of digital tools is often a new thing. And often people, they don't really like to do things differently. So you have this level of anxiety. If you don't have a clear training and coaching plan, then it's going to be very challenging. And the third question you have to ask, okay, we have a shared vision. We know why, for example, video messaging is important. 
we know exactly how we are going to train and coach the teams. But then we have a kickoff meeting and the dealer principal or the national sales manager is saying, guys, we're all going to start video messaging now because it's important and it increases our conversion. Let's do it. And you create momentum. But then the next day, if you don't follow up and you don't ask during your daily meetings, how many videos did you make? And what was the quality of the videos? If you don't follow up, then in the eyes of a dealership or in the eyes of a sales advisor, it was obviously not important to her because you're not following up. So it's very clear to ask yourself the question before you start implementing any change, how are we going to monitor and follow up afterwards? You should define that already at the beginning. And then the, the fourth, question is, do we have the necessary resources? Because for example, with video messaging, if you don't have Wi-Fi speed up to a certain level, then the uploading takes too long, the uploading. And then people get frustrated because it takes too long. Or they don't have a tripod, uh, so you cannot make steady videos. Or maybe their phone is not good enough. So the resources need to be in place around the implementation of a digital tool. Otherwise, people get frustrated. That's the fourth question that you should ask yourself. Do we have the resources in place? And then the fifth question is about what's your action plan. And that does not need to be a 15 pages book, just one page. What are we going to do and how are we going to do it? For example, with video messaging, these are the types of videos that we're going to record and we're going to record two, three, four, five a day. So the sales advisors are very clear on this is expected from me. If you don't do that, you will start over and over and over again. And only if you ask yourself these five questions, do we have a shared vision? Do we know how to get the skills up to a certain level? Are we clear on how to monitor and follow up? Do we have the resources in place? and what is our action plan, then you are creating successful change. And this applies on any digital initiative that you as an OEM, as a dealer group or dealership would like to implement over the coming years. So I challenge you, just choose one of the initiatives that you have in your current portfolio for 2021. Whether it's video messaging, whether it's um, the digital reception in after sales, any initiative that you want to implement within your dealer network or dealership. And then tick the boxes when you think, okay, we have the shared vision and we have the skills in place. But maybe we did not yet um, think very well of how are we going to monitor progress and the quality and quantity level. We did not really think of which resources would be in place or we did not have a clear action plan, yeah? This is a very simple table that might help you to define your change readiness for your digital initiatives. Now, you will see that when you're implementing digital retail or digital tools within your dealership, that sales after sales marketing teams, they will go through a change cycle. And for many, Sales advisors, sales advisors, sometimes it's challenging to accept a new reality, to, to live with a new way of working. They will go through a change curve and they will have this feeling of, I'm not going to do this. And that's totally normal. I would almost say, if you feel that there is kind of a resistance, it's a good thing. Because that means that you, as a retailer, are trying to do things differently, that you are um, changing something and that you're challenging the status quo. The key question is when there is resistance is how are you reacting as a leader? And what you often hear is voices when there is resistance, uh, it does not add any value or it's too much work, this new initiative. What's the impact from our job? Just think of video messaging. When people don't know it yet, what's the added value? Why should we do it? 
It's too much work, it takes too much time. What's the impact from my job? We cannot do it, it's too difficult. Or do you trust them? Because now they will see all our videos and then maybe when they see our videos, they see how I interact with the customer and they will blame me uh, for that. That's what you hear. Now managing change, leading change is about how you are preparing yourself for these kinds of sentences. And as a leader, you need to be very clear, how am I going to act and react? Because if you hear from your team that it does not add enough value or any value, then you have to clarify the added value. That other dealers who that are implementing video messages, they achieved 10% uh, higher conversion in sales or in after sales more than 20%. So they know, okay, so that there is some added value in it. And if they say it's too much work, step by step, maybe you not ask five videos a day from them, and you start with one or two and only one type of videos. Let's say every, every lead receives a follow-up video or when we plan a test drive, let's send all the planned test drive customer a video one day before, step by step. If they say, what's the impact for my job? Give them confidence that this is a new way of working. This is a new digital way where we are living in an era where we have traditional oriented customers who are coming to the showroom like before, like they have always been doing uh, over, the, over the past years. But we are also living in an era where we have a lot of digital oriented customers who want to do everything fully online. And we have customers who want to dance in between. They want to do online and offline. And as a dealership, as a sales advisor, as a service advisor, you should be prepared for all these three types of realities. And if they think we cannot do it, if that is the kind of resistance you hear, you have to allow them to practice. It's okay to make mistakes. This is something new, guys. Let's practice. Don't send the videos to customers yet. Let's take a week just to get the quality of the videos up. And then together, we will start sending those videos to customers and see uh, the reactions. And the last thing is when you hear, do you trust them? They can see everything now. Well, this is the new way of working. And what I will do by looking at my dashboard and see all the videos is coach you, support you, and I, I will help you to sell more cars. I will help you to improve your after sales business. That is about managing change, leading change. It's okay summarizing when you have resistance, it's a good thing. Now it's up to you how you're going to react on that. And then please remember when people don't do things or they don't change, it's sometimes maybe because they don't dare, they're not able or they don't know. And then it's easy and it's a skill thing. Only if they say, we don't want this, then it's an attitude thing. And maybe you then have to have a serious discussion with that sales advisor or service advisor that this is the new way of working. Skills you can train and you can coach people, make better videos and high quality videos. But if they really think, no, no, I don't want to do this, then have a serious conversation because as a dealer, are you want, do you want to be this trend setting dealer? going the extra mile, exceeding expectations? Or are you going to be that dealership that just waits and see for the reality to come? And then maybe you are too late because the competitor is already implementing things that you should have implemented maybe earlier. So important, when people don't do things, is it a skills or an attitude thing? Skills, things, you can do something about it. If it's an attitude thing, um, you can really um, have a co serious conversation. But summarizing, what I would like to share with you today is when people don't do things, is it because maybe you have not been preparing the change correctly? And this model that you see now on the screen will really help you to ask yourself the right questions. Did we have a shared vision? Did you 
have a clear idea how you're going to develop the required skill? Do you know how you're going to monitor and steer and follow up? Do you have the resources already in place? And what is going to be your action plan to make this a success? Again, make sure that these five questions are answered before you start any change. And then I can almost guarantee you that you will have a higher level of successful implementation of digital retail. There are additional success factors like doing things together, creating the dialogue when you want your entire dealer network to work in a different way, do that please in a co-creation. Involve some dealers at the beginning already and share thoughts on, hey, how shall we do this together? Create this urgency, guys. It's important because we want to be first movers. We want to be trendsetters and we don't want to be the Kodak of this world or the Nokia. You have to create this momentum where you are really saying, okay, from today, to tomorrow, we're going to work in a different way. Create this momentum so that from that moment onwards, you can start working in a different way. Another tip and a success factor is you create ambassadors. Within a dealer network, there are always dealerships who are more influencing than others. Let's bring them on board at the beginning. Because if you have them as ambassadors, then the rest of the dealers will all look at them and say, hey, that dealership in Mumbai or Delhi is already implementing that digital tools. Maybe there's something good about it and we should also be starting. Or at the dealership level, you will always have a sales advisor or a technician or an after sales advisor who is maybe the one with a lot of experience or he's kind of friend of, of everybody. Well, let's take that uh, advice then as ambassador for your change. Keep up the speed because what you often see within change is that you start with a lot of emotion and inspiration and then after a couple of weeks the speed go down. So keep up the speed as leaders, as managers, so you to have a really sustainable way of implementing change and continuously keep communicating of what are you achieving and what can you celebrate uh, because of the digital initiative that you, have, that you have been implemented. For example, with video messaging, if you have some great reactions from customers, share it with the team. If you have some five-star ratings, hang it in the canteen and show everybody that you're doing all a great job. Last but not least, it's all about you as leaders. How are you going to manage change? How are you going to lead the resistance and make sure that any change that you want to implement is going to be sustainable over time? These are some tips from experience that I wanted to share with you today. I can guarantee you, if you take these things into account for any change initiative over the next years, uh, you will really benefit from it and um, your business will flourish because of these uh, tips and tricks. Thank you so much, Emre, for such a wonderful and insightful presentation on managing change. You know, how leaders should really act and you know plan any change that happens in the dealer network or uh, in its business. Uh, I would like to ask you questions around that. Uh, first of all, you have been working with so many brands like Bentley, Jaguar Land Rover, and Volkswagen, and you have worked across uh, the different regions in, in the world. How has been the experience and what advices you have given to them? One. And second question is, what are the pitfalls and challenges that you have seen during this experience? Well, let's, let's combine then your, your two questions. I think the biggest pitfall is that I have often seen that OEMs are investing a lot of money in developing uh, tools, in implementing tools uh, within the dealer networks. A lot of millions of uh, dollars go into the, to the development of digital tools and then everything is ready. And then it is almost thrown to the dealer network and then OEMs are surprised why dealerships 
are not using those digital tools. My key suggestion there is already within the development of digital tools, start thinking of how we are going to implement those digital tools because a lot of effort should go into that part. Um, otherwise it's a waste of time and money. Uh, then you will end up as an OEM with a lot of great digital tools, but nobody using it. And that's not the idea behind the initial day ID of developing digital tools to close the gap in the customer journey. What are the digital tools nowadays dealers are using across the globe, you know, in order to, you know, to be the part of the customer journey and, and you know, close the sales at the end of the day? What are the popular tools you, uh, you have seen uh, dealers are using right now? Yeah, so it depends really on the continent uh, where you can see that in some continents, the online retailing and the online uh, sales and after sales um, has really speed up, especially since last year, where many OEMs implemented a new way of communication like live chat, um, live video, but also the, implement, uh, the implementation of video uh, messaging, uh, screen sharing, uh, configurations where you can, um, from a distance like we are uh, doing now, have a conversation with your customer. Those kind of initiatives have been really um, implemented in most of the brands and most of the countries. Whereas I do believe that, for example, in, in, in India, there are many customers that are still very traditionally oriented, that they want to go to a dealership and they want to touch and feel the car. And I'm convinced that although Tesla, for example, is now coming to India and the whole customer journey is um, developed online there, customers for the coming years will still come physically to the dealership. The question is, how can you then engage with those customers in the online world to trigger them to come to a dealership and when they are in the dealership and they go away again, how can you keep them with you so that they don't end up um, buying at a competitor? One of the tools that is actively used throughout the world there is uh, video messaging where you can really help to engage with the customer before the purchase, but also after the showroom visit and the purchase. Um, and there are many, many other tools. What we see, for example, is digital valuations of cars, the service reception that you don't have to fill in the forms as a customer or as a service advisor anymore, but you can totally do your uh, vehicle health check uh, online. That's another digital tool that, uh, that is implemented. Or for example, how to video. If a, if a customer is interested in how does my trailer assist works, send them a video of trailer assist so that you don't have to call the customer by phone and explain it in a very difficult way then uh, how it exactly works. You don't have to invite them to come to the showroom and show it there, how to videos. Now that there are numerous digital tools that dealerships are currently implemented, implementing. If you have, um, if you're curious on what kind of digital tools dealerships are implementing throughout the world, you can, can you give some uh, examples, you know, uh, maybe in, from your experience, you know, where you have trained a particular dealership or you have worked with certain brand, how yeah. they have to change from now and then after they have gone this change, undergone change that you have been giving training on. Uh, can you give share some examples on that side? For example, there are some brands that wanted to start, um, they wanted to give the opportunity to sales advisors to do everything from their iPad. When a customer is coming into the showroom, you're not sitting behind the desk anymore. No, you're standing in the showroom as a sales advisor, you have an iPad in your hand, and when the customer is interested in a certain car, you can walk to the car, but if you don't have that car in the showroom, you can, from, from your iPad, connect to a big screen and show it to the customer there. 
when the customer is interested in how trailer assist works, you can show it on your iPad or you connect to the big screen and show it there. At digital retail, this digital way of working within the showroom, that is something uh, which has been quite challenging for dealerships to implement. And it was very important, and that's why I mentioned co-creation, to join up with some dealers and define the success factors of how are we going to implement digital tools within the dealership together. And there, for example, we saw that the best way to have the sales advisor stand up, use the iPad, is to take away the desk or take away the computers in the showroom and put them in the back office. Because otherwise they would still go and sit behind their computer and continue in the traditional way. You can also think of the resources that needed to be in place. If you really want to engage with the customer in a digital way, then make sure your Wi-Fi is up to speed. Because if you want to have a li live video chat with your customer, you cannot accept that while you're having that conversation, the streaming is not going well. So make sure your resources are in place. Otherwise, your sales advisors, but especially your customers, are going to be frustrated. Yeah. So all these kind of things you have to take into account. It brings me back to the, the five questions that I've shared with you before. Any digital tool, in order to make it a success, the implementation is, why should we do it? What skills do we need eh, in order to, 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 to screen share the, the how-to videos on the big screen? How does that work? Um, what resources do we need in place? How are we going to monitor that my team is really doing it well? And what, are, what is going to be the action plan? It brings me really back to those five questions because yeah. I can guarantee you that this is the you mentioned, uh, you mentioned that you have worked in India with uh, brands like Volkswagen. And in India, there is one... Uh, Traditionally, the, the dealership business has been owned by you know entrepreneurs, and they directly manage the business. They yeah. they, don't, they don't have CEOs or executives who manage their business, but they, they themselves are managing day to day operations. As well as now, their second generation entrepreneurs are also entering this business. What do you suggest to them, and what kind of advice you would to give to them in terms of managing the change, uh, in terms of going through digital transformation, as well as adapting any change in particular. When you want to be a trend-setting dealer or a dealership, sometimes you have to challenge the status quo. And as an OEM, uh, there is always a challenge that as they are doing things on a national level, sometimes things take longer. But if, if they are doing it, they are often doing it well. What I really like is those dealership, dealerships that are taking the initiatives and aligning with the OEMs. Hey, I think this is interesting. This is new. Um, let me pilot this. Let me do this. And I will show you if this is something interesting that you can implement for the rest of your dealer network. Often, when you wait for the OEM to do things, um, then you need to hold back a little bit because maybe the, um, the, the deadline of the launching of a certain digital tool is a bit later than that you would like it to be. And even within India, there are cer certain dealers that have shared with me, Imer, I really would like to fully align with the OEM, but please let me implement, for example, uh, video messaging already because I believe in it and I want to start tomorrow. And if I don't start today, I'm almost throwing money on the floor because I could have increased my conversion by 10%. So let me start, see how it works, and then I will share my learnings with the OEMs so that they can also benefit from that. Maybe I shouldn't say that, but uh, as there are many um, colleagues from OEMs present during this session today, but I would really invite dealer groups and dealerships to challenge the status quo and be a trend setting leader so that even OEMs can learn from you. I've seen in Europe, in the Middle East, in America, that those uh, dealers really are winning the, the game of customer ownership. 
they are the ones that OEMs look to and they are often used then as a best practice. And um, I really invite dealerships to take that kind of a DNA within your way of working. Thank you so much, Emil, for joining. And uh, I hope you'll stay back for question answers that will audience will ask on the comment box. Thanks Perfect. so much. Thank you very much for inviting me.